All right, we're sorry. We're just trying to get this set up. It seems like every time we do it, we run into something else. Yeah, man, it's a, it's a new world we're living in, man. I'm, I'm learning so much about uh, technology right now, man. It's crazy. I know, right? Yeah. You're doing, you're doing a, we'll record an intro for this later, so don't worry about that. But you're doing your, um, all your trainings and stuff through Zoom. Are you doing it through Zoom as well? Uh, no, just I'm just doing one on one, so I'm just doing FaceTime. Okay. In which that's choppy at times, and I've ran into some problems with it. But you know, once yeah. I disconnect from Wi-Fi, it works pretty good. Yeah, we have that problem sometimes too. It's yeah. crazy. It is. So it's so nuts. crazy. Yeah. So crazy. Can you guys see me good? Hear me good? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're real clear. Our ours is kind of grainy. We're on my computer, which is not the best. Uh, the best view but we look all we look all pasty and weird but um we are also i'm also doing my tiktok live as well um they're just in the background listening in um we, <laughs> yeah we get do you have tiktok you know what i was just now saying it in the shower and told my wife that i'm probably gonna do me a tiktok video i i have it i think but i've, I've never uh, did any videos on it yet I figured you might, or your sons would at least have it. Yeah, yeah, I think they, I think they do. Probably, I know my oldest probably, probably has it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, so we go tick. Can we turn this up? Oh, we yeah. go yeah. Uh, TikTok live every single night around eight o'clock and just have fun with the people, just to like create a positive space, somewhere to go where you don't have to worry about everything that's going on in the world. Just have fun, kick back. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. This week we've, this week we've had some fun with some decade nights. We had eighties night. We had nineties night. Tonight is hair bands night. So later we'll listen to music from the hair bands and just have fun together. That's what we do. So they're in the That's background great. online, but thanks for being with us. Finally, we have had, you know, you're a busy, busy, busy person. And I'm so glad that we have a time now to sit down and chit chat for a little bit. Yeah, me too. I'm glad you guys have me on. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. not a problem. So, we won't start. I mean, we won't keep you a long time, but we just kind of want to like start from the beginning, like of of your basketball days in Beckley, right? Beckley, Wood absolutely. Woodrow, absolutely. Flying Eagles, Flying Eagles. Yeah, that's you know that's where it all started. Uh, you know, uh, I grew up watching you know the Flying Eagles, of course, in in the early nineties, where you know I think in ninety one they won their first state championship, where they had Tink Brown. Kevin English, and then that followed up with the Color Sortos and Neighbors and Scruggs and, uh, you know, uh, who am I leaving out? Uh, so the 90s for Beckley basketball was pretty big. So, you know, those were my role models you yeah. know, growing up. They, those were my Michael Jordans and uh, Kobe Bryant. So I remember, you know, when I was a youngster, we couldn't afford to go to the game. So me and my brothers, I had three brothers. And we right. would just get – go down in our basement and listen to the game Fred Persink on the radio and then you know that's where the, that's where it all started I started dreaming then just to you know just to make the team was the, was my initial goal and uh you know you know the rest is history now you know I won two state championships player of the year and went on to sign the division one scholarship after that what year did you win your state championships won it up 97 98 97 okay. Willing Park who was you know they were the top dogs they had Raphael Cruz so you know we we beat them uh and then my senior year we beat Fermont senior we we spanked them too pretty I think it was like 30 points or something they That's didn't have crazy. a they didn't have a chance they didn't have a chance against us <laughs> so you you graduated high school in, in 98 right yeah Yo, you just turned 40 yesterday I happy did. birthday Happy, you're yeah. in our 40s club. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is when it all starts falling apart, man. <laughs> man that's, I'm, and that's why I'm trying hard to keep it together, man. I'm working out twice a day right now. I'm trying to not look 40, man. Heck, now, I saw I, you dunk. We, we saw you dunk yeah. yesterday. That was awesome. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't reach my goal, though, guys. I wanted the windmill, and I went up the windmill. It takes too much force on the knees and back man I went to a tent and it was like no let me just try real <laughs> simple one so yeah do you still got the style points appreciate that man appreciate that. Well, my son nice. hey hey my, my son they gave me a hard time about it you know oh dad you oh look you can't jump like you used to that and that so 
you know, I, I always hear from those guys. They can't beat me yet. No one in the neighborhood. You know, all these really? high school kids. Oh, yeah, I go through them one after another. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah. so you uh, you dominated at Beckley, and then you went to Marshall, and you were there, what, two years? No, I stayed all four. Uh, Jeff, was it all was four? Actually, yeah, man, I was uh, – I stayed in school, and this is this is something you know these the young athletes now. I uh, mean, which times have changed, and it, it's you 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 are able now to really know where you are in the draft. You know, nowadays with all the social media and ways to you know uh, gathering information about yourself. But you know, my sophomore year, man, I was a projected top twenty pick in the draft, and you know, being from Beckley, being from West Virginia, being extremely country and naive. You know, I didn't even read the newspaper. I didn't read any of the magazines. All I wanted to do was just play ball and win a championship with Greg White. You know, that was the goal. And, uh, you know, I found out, you know, years later. Well, actually the following year, I, I, I found out uh, – through an ASPN article that my coach showed me, Coach Jeff Bowles. He was like, look at this, look at this right up. He was like, look, this is what they're saying about you. And that's when, you know, I started saying, oh, my God, what? The NBA wants me? Are you kidding me? Like, little old Tamar Slade from Beckley, West Virginia. So, you know, it happened to me so fast. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, it was overwhelming at times. Uh, but at the same time, you know, I just – did what I always done and just, you know, go as hard as I can, try to stay focused, try to make the right decisions. And, uh, you know, God, God continued to bless me. So my martial career, I don't, I, I wouldn't change that for the world though. You know, I got relationships with these guys that uh, it's unbreakable. I mean, they're my brothers, even though it's been 20 years, you mean guys like Cornelius Jackson, Joe Burgess, J.R. Van, who's Monty Wright, Josh Perky. I could go on for days. I don't want to leave anyone out, but, you know, these are my brothers, and uh, I played for 12 years pro, and, uh, you know, nothing's as uh, strong as the bond that I had with, with my guys at Marshall. And, uh, you know, it, it was a great experience. I met my wife there. I That's what I was going to say. Yeah. My freshman year, you know, she was the finest thing on campus, and that old <laughs> Tamar took a shot, man. I took my shot at her, and, and, and I, I swung and hit a home run, man. So we've been together since then, and – uh Got two beautiful kids together. So Marshall has been a ble- was a blessing for me. That's awesome. That's where our daughter. She it's her first year there this year, which obviously she didn't get to complete. I mean, she's completing it, but not you know there there. But uh, and she yeah. really, I think she really likes it. She there. likes. So it's a good school. She's a smart girl. She chose the right school. I'm so glad she didn't choose that other school. I, I am too. Listen, I mean, we are. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. We're WVU fans in the sense of some sports. But as a school as a whole, I feel much more comfortable with her being at Marshall. Maybe not necessarily in the Huntington area. I know there's parts of that area where you're like, uh, right. but yeah, you know, right on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but right on campus, I think she's good. So, um, but tell us, I remember you told me a while back, uh, kind of your story a little bit of when you were drafted. It wasn't, wasn't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, that was one of the best moments of my life, you know, because I knew I wasn't going in the first round. Uh, but I didn't really invite anybody over my house. I had my brother. My dad came over. My mom had a, a two-bedroom house in, in, in one of the one, – in a, in a spot in Beckley, West Virginia. Her and my brother lived there, and I would come in on the weekends, of course, and sleep on the couch or whatever. So uh, first round went by, and it was like one friend after another kept – showing up you know at the house and before we knew we probably had i would say 10 to 15 guys at the house and my i'm on the phone with my agent uh and he was like you know no one's in the first round I said 35 cleveland cavaliers they said you're still there uh john lucas told my agent we'll take you but uh old duke blue devil didn't get going the first round either carlos bozer so uh, they took him instead of me and then the rockets said they were going to take me at 43 and they ended up drafting a guard that, I mean, I think he lasted for a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. He didn't last long at all. <laughs> and uh, so Miami Heat at, at 53 said, we're taking you at 53. If you're still there at 53, we're taking you. So I'm saying that's when I started watching. You know, I didn't go 35. I didn't go 43. So I started watching. I told everybody, I said, I'm going to go to Miami 53 right here if uh, – uh, 
he froze up a bit. And select God rest his soul. He just passed away. You're breaking up. Tomorrow, I don't know if you can see us, but you froze up on us for a minute. How's it now? Is that better? You're yeah, you're back. You're back. Yeah, yeah. You said uh, all, all I heard you, you froze up, and I just barely heard you say who just passed away. Yeah, Rasu, Rasu Butler passed away. Played in the That's South. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He died in a car crash a couple couple summers ago, and uh, they selected him, in which he turned out to be a great player too. Had a great career. Played twelve years or so. Uh, so at that point, you know, everyone's looking at me like, what's next? So the first thing I did was my mother and my wife, my girlfriend at the time, they were back in the bedroom and I went to console them, just letting them know, like, look, everything's going to be okay. My mother was crying. My wife was trying, trying to console her a little bit. I was like, everything's going to be okay. I'll go overseas or I'll be a free agent or something like that. They went to commercial. And I came back into the living room and I'm talking to all my boys, you know, saying the same thing. Like, you know, I'm going to be all right, you know. And uh, Cornelius Jackson, who's now an assistant coach at Marshall, uh, when I had my back to the TV and I shook his hand, I was like, man, I'm going to be all right. He looked around me. He's like, say, you just got drafted, dog. And I don't remember anything after that. I just remember on the floor and everyone on top of me screaming. I didn't, I didn't even get to see any of it. I turned around and saw my face. I saw my face on the screen and I don't really remember anything after it. You know, we were in the, we wasn't in the nicest neighborhood. So they don't call the cops that often, but we were so loud. Our neighbors <laughs> called the police because really? they, thought, they thought something bad because it was, it had to be pretty, pretty loud. And uh, <laughs> The cop, the cop showed up, and I was like, man, I just got drafted, man. So they were cool. You know, they got <laughs> autographs and all that stuff, man. It was it was just a magical night, man. It was just, you know, something, you know, that, that I, I, I'm going to share this story for you. With my seat gets a little bit tough and fortunate enough to be in, in that same situation just to tell them how special it is and just enjoy it, you know, because I'm first generation, you know, so now I can give him wisdom that, you know, my father and my mother couldn't give to me. So, you know, it was just, it, it was bigger than just getting drafted though, because I was going into college. We didn't have that summer. We didn't have a place to live. You know, we were homeless, me and my mother and brother. We didn't have a place to live. And four years later, I'm getting drafted into the NBA from Beckley, West Virginia never thought in a million years that that would happen. So it wasn't just about making it to the NBA, it was breaking that that generational curse that, that's that been haunting our family for years, you know. So it, it was it was a breakthrough for, 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 for our family in so many ways, and it still is to this day, you know. I'm, I'm yeah. working for the NBA right now. It's still a big part of my life. So, you know, God is good. God is so good. That's, that's, I love that story. That's such a good story of just, like you said, overcoming that, you know, the odds in essence, you know, because like you said, sometimes we feel like we're at a disadvantage being here in West Virginia that we get overlooked, you know, and I'm sure talent gets overlooked all the time from West Virginia because people don't really think about us, but, but I I like that story. You gotta be, you have a toughness. There's something there mentally too, that people don't recognize. You can have all the talent in the world and you see people throw it away. Yeah. So that, that says a lot. Well, I mean, you know, I, I played with these city boys in New York City, L.A. guys, and when I tell them where I'm from, they, what? <laughs> the first thing they say is they got black people there, then the next thing they say is you got you got all your teeth, you know, jokingly saying it, but, you know, that's the perception. And But that's the chip I played with on my shoulder, you know, starting back in AAU when we would do travel ball. You know, they would look at us and see, you know, it'd be me and maybe one other black guy on the team and a bunch of, white kids, and they were like, man, we're going to destroy these kids. We would kick their tail. I, I played with a team out of uh, Mullins, West Virginia, with uh, P.J. Short, Kevin McBride, uh, who had Mike Tom. Is, uh, John West, John West. Uh, man, we, we would kick butt when we went to Nationals, man. You know, so – uh, but I always took pride in saying that I'm from the state of West Virginia. Uh, and, and that's why I come back now to, uh, you know, do camps and, you know, talk to schools and different things like that, because 
you know, I didn't know. I didn't know I could see something outside of West Virginia when I was yeah. there, you know. So uh, I, I feel like, you know, if I could do it, you know, anyone in the state can do it. You know, if they put the work in and, and do the right thing. Right. Right. Um, so you spent some time in the NBA here, and then you also spent some time playing overseas in Italy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after years in NBA, went to Jerusalem to play. Oh, okay. So, is the connection messing up? Yeah, it was a little bit. Yeah. Is the connection okay? You're okay now. It's getting better now, yeah. Yeah, so – so I went to play my first year from the NBA. I went to play in uh, Israel in Jerusalem. I played there for a year and a half. In which, when my agent gave, he called me up and said, "I got a job offer you for in Israel." And I literally thought he was joking. I was like, "Damn, do they play basketball there?" Because all I ever thought about Israel was, of course, what you read in the Bible, and what you <laughs> see on the news. That is bombings and stuff like that all the time. So I was naive to. You know, the, the culture, I was naive to the, the, the history that they had with basketball. And when I went over there, I mean, it was like I was Michael Jordan or something. You know, couldn't go to the mall. You know, the fans were singing at the game. It was just an amazing experience. And, uh, you know, we would play – we played our rival team, Maccabi Tel Aviv, and it was 14,000 people, 7,000 on this side and all red. It was like West Virginia Marshall rival all red and then the other side was all yellow and they're singing songs i'm talking about in warm-up from from start to finish wow. I mean, the, the atmosphere was unbelievable so i experienced it. and then after that i went to italy and ended up playing uh, eight years in italy so uh, okay you know wow you've had some experiences yeah yeah i have i have i mean that's what i'm saying i never when i was 14 years old, the same age as my son. I would never thought in a million years that I would be playing basketball overseas. Even when I was in the NBA, I'm thinking I'm going to play 12, 15. I'll play long as I want. I'll end up being an all-star, all this stuff. And, you know, I, I remember having to talk to my friends saying, man, if this don't work, I ain't never going overseas, you know. So I was kind of – my first couple of years, I was I was stubborn, though. I didn't want to be over there, you know. Oh, yeah. Because I felt, I felt like I should have still been in the NBA. And uh, once I – uh, what 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 did it for me was I got invited to a mini camp with Golden State Warriors after my uh, what was it my third year from the NBA. I got invited to a mini camp and I went there and I was so locked in. I went back to state. My brother was at West Virginia State at the time. I went back. I left my house that I'm living in here. I went and stayed on his couch for 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 a month. Out twice a day, uh, that roughness a little bit, and uh, I went to mini camp with those guys, and I played the best basketball I ever played in my life. So uh, once the camp finished, Chris Mullen uh, was the GM at the time and the president. Like tomorrow, can you come to the office? We want to talk to you. And they was like, "Man, you were amazing. We love you. We want to sign you. We got to sign a few other players first, but you know, we got it's a numbers game, so we got to wait it out, right? So I walked out of that office, and that was enough for me, where it was like, if, if they sign me, they do. If they don't, they don't. But I knew it wasn't because of my talent. I knew it was because of numbers. And I never believed in that stuff at all. But uh, I remember walking back to my hotel, and I just – it was just a sigh of relief. I just smiled, like, okay, now I can just enjoy. I know it's not because I didn't work hard enough or I didn't have the talent to play in the NBA. It was – more so situation, numbers, whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, then I went on, I went back, I got offered a great deal, a uh, two-year deal in Israel, and I had a choice to make, wait for Golden State or take this deal in Israel. And uh, I was like, man, you know what? I'm, I'm going to take this guaranteed money. I'm not going to wait. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you on that one and at I, all. Yeah. I went Plus, you're the I'm man like, in Israel, right? I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah it was, yeah, it was, it wasn't, yeah, I was, but it wasn't that. It was more so, you know, I had I had family I was taking care of. You know, I had bills right. to pay. So I yeah. had to, you know, while I wait for Golden State and they tell me, no, and I missed out on this this great deal. And I was playing the Euro League and, uh, you know, it was former NBA players. You guys remember Travis Best? and uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, 
guy that played at uh, Wake Forest, uh, Eric Williams. So we had a great team. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to go over here and do this. And if the NBA wants me, you know, they can come get me from there. But, you know, I, I like still, it. you know, I ain't going to lie. I regret it a little bit. I probably should have waited it out because that year ended up I got hurt. It wasn't it wasn't the best season of my life. So, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. You know, yeah. I, I had a great career and I'm proud of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic that's career. Awesome. And you're still, so after after all your basketball, that part is over. You're still, if you're still with the NBA in a different role, right? Right. So yeah, yeah, so like, now, I'm sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, just talk a little bit about what role you have now with the NBA. Yeah, so I work for the uh, NBA Players Association, and I'm in the player program department. And this, we, uh, you know, we help guys both on and off the court. Uh, we develop uh, programs for our guys, uh, for summer programs. We help them with, you know, leadership. We help them with uh, real estate. We got tech programs. We got coaching programs, of which I'm the director of. Uh, we also facilitate our, our team awareness meetings in which, you know, Throughout the season, each team has two mandatory meetings, a phase one and phase two, where we cover finances, we cover mental health, we cover health, we cover, uh, you know, player assistance. There's so many different things. It's like a 90-minute meeting that the players absolutely hate. They hate to see us when we come in because it's usually after practice or whatnot. But I've been in that role for about six years now. Uh, it's a small department. Uh, the guys that's been there that, that I work with been there for 25 years. I'm, I'm the only really young blood there, uh, so it's it's a it's a job people want. But you know, I, I treat the people the right way. I build great relationships, and uh, you know, be able to have that role, man. I, I mean, I thank God for it every day. You know, and I work from home too. You know, that's the good thing about it. You know, I don't have to. The office is in New York. But I'm a uh, I'm a regional rep, so I got the Southeast in which the Hornets, uh, uh, Washington Wizards, New Orleans Pelicans, Sacramento Kings, and uh, who am I leaving out? Memphis Grizzlies are all the teams that I wow. I oversee. Nice. Yeah. So, oh Beckley boy, man. Oh Beckley right. boy. Just just keep keep going. But you know, like guys like Jerry West and you know Rod Thorne, uh, Jay. Will Randy Moss, man, it's this, you know, it's a it's a few of us that, you know, make it out of it. And, you know, one thing I want to just keep doing is keep giving back, though, to the yeah. state, man, and just let us know who's next. You know, it's another Jay Wills, another Tamar Slice, another Randy Moss out there somewhere. But, you know, it's up to us to to to, to inspire and get back to these to these young kids in the state of West Virginia. And that's what takes me into the last thing I want to finish with you before we let you go is what you are doing now. And that's kind of what you're doing now with Tamar Slay basketball, right? With the basketball camps yeah. for the young kids. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. And I started that. Uh, that's, that's when I retired. That's why I retired. When I came back from my last season, my 12th year, I was, I got three more years in me. I was 30. 34. I just turned 34 and I was, I'm going to play three more years. And then I started doing the programs that I now organize and facilitate. I started doing those in the summer and I was like, you know what? Uh, this may be a little bit easier than running and jumping and being in pain every night. I can start using my head a little bit, mm -hmm. right? As far as creating a business. And then I did a camp and you know, I started working with the kids and I was just like, man, this is, I, I really enjoy doing this. And I can, I could really put some time and effort into, you know, growing my business and, and giving back to the kids. And, uh, you know, I remember the first, the first camp I did in Charleston, West Virginia at the YMCA there. What's the name of the Y that sits up on the hill down there? It's just the Charleston Family YMCA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so I did a Christmas clinic, and you know, it's Tamar Slay with marketing, former NBA player, Marshall Hall of Famer. I showed up at the Christmas camp. It was one kid there that showed up at the camp. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, man, maybe this not gonna work out the way I thought it was. But you know what? I went in and I started working. The camp was from nine to four, one kid, nine to four. <laughs> I had to find time to entertain this kid for, for the whole day. And I, you know, I went in and I just started going, I went after it. and. Before I knew it, other kids that was at the Y, they started filling in. Before the camp ended in three days, I probably had 20 kids there. And, uh, yeah. you know, I just get a kick. I just get a joy out of 
seeing kids develop. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm passionate about uh, the game of basketball, of course, but I understand how important basketball was for me, you know, off the court, you know, right. of, of cha- changing my family dynamic and uh, blessing me in so many ways. And if it wasn't for basketball, where would I be? So I take it serious when I, when I, when I, when I have my camps, when I do my clinics, all my teams that I coach, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a passion that that's unbreakable, you know, and that's, that's why, you know, I feel like I'm successful what I'm doing because I truly love it. I'm truly passionate about it. And, uh, you know, basketball has been my life and continue and will continue to be my life. So, yeah. Yeah, you can you can tell yeah. when I you know when I see your stories on social media and, and see you interact with the kids, you can see how much they look up to you and how much fun they're really having in these camps. I think it's a great thing that you're doing. And I know that when you were in here, when you were in Charleston at one point, I wanted to bring Nate to one of your camps, but then it didn't work out, and then he got disinterested in basketball. So, um, <laughs> see, if you would have brought him, he'd probably be all state or something right now. That's right. We got to get him back in it. Well, he has yeah. it in his blood because I mean, Jeff's a good yeah. basketball we all, player. We're, and... up, we're basketball family. My yeah. whole family is so. Me and my brothers, my dad, my uncles, like everybody played ball. Oh, that's right. I remember. You, yeah, I remember you told me that. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Basketball is a great sport, man, and, and it's just. You know, it, 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 it's, it, it's been so good to me. Even yesterday, you know, for my birthday, my wife had that surprise. I don't know if you guys saw it on I social saw that. media. That was awesome. I mean, I, I, I would never think in a million years that you folks would do that for me. You know, I, I wouldn't think that. But to see, you know, it was probably 30 cars that came through the neighborhood just to tell me happy birthday. And these are all the kids that I coach, you know, and families that, you know, that dropped off cars and different things like that. So, you know, that, that that made me that that made my day right there. I hadn't I mean I my the back of my head was hurting so so much from smiling. So my wife, she I don't know how I can top that. I thought I did good for her fortieth, but you know, she she crushed it with that. But, and I had no idea. I was mad. I was like, What are you like she kept filming me? I'm like, What are you doing? Like what 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 I wanted this I just worked out. I was like, I need my phone, so I can go take a shower. Like, what are you doing? And before you know it, it was forty cars coming through the neighborhood. That is awesome. I mean, that was it, so cool. it, you'll ne- we, nobody really ever forgets their 40th birthday, but you had your 40th birthday came at this really crazy time and she found a way to make yeah. it special and have everybody yeah. acknowledge you and see you anyway. So that was really, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was cool. That is awesome. Yeah. A question for you on NBA. Um, Cause I was thinking about this actually today. I was like, what are these guys going to do if they, are they? Are they? They they haven't canceled the season, have they? No, no, it's not canceled yet. Um, and, and they're gonna try their best. Uh, you know, I got to be careful what I say. Uh, well, that's true. Uh, that's true. Yeah. I, I didn't think about we, we, that. We had some, yeah, yeah, we had some call. Yeah, we had some. We had some calls, and uh, you know, this this what you're hearing in in, in in the news is 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 you know majority. I'll just leave it at that. This, this that's enough. Yeah, 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 I just, yeah, I just was that. curious. I can, we, yeah, we can, we can chat offline. It's just I a just, crazy yeah. time. I just was, I just want to see more basketball, man. Man, I tell you what, me too, man. I, I'm dying. This is, yeah, this is crazy, man. This time, but not to have March Madness and not to have, you know, the NBA season going on this time of year is just weird. And then I had. All my AAU teams, I was so excited about. Like, we got invited to the Under Armour circuit. I was so excited about my team. I just added a few new pieces. And now it's, it's you know, I'm just doing my driveway stuff. But, you mm-hmm. know, it's been a – I'll take it. But it's also been a blessing that I've been able to slow down a little bit and really enjoy my family and yes. not be – you know, even though I'm still like this, but it's, you know, it's a little bit slower now, you know. It's, it, that's a good thing for all of us. I mean, you're you're way more, you're so, so busy, but it's good for everybody. I really feel like I said this on a podcast we did last night. Um, I'm never home in the evenings either. And it's been so nice to be able to be home, be able to cook dinner, like sit down. Like we all have been sitting down together. Yeah. Like I'm like, well, all six of us are here. Right. Wait, what's happening? Because we're forced to be. Yeah. So it is yeah. kind of nice. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's a little yeah, it nice to be able to do that. Um, I mean, I, I, yeah. I haven't hurt anybody yet. We haven't fought yet. <laughs> but we're only, what, how many weeks in? Yeah, we got a ways to go. We, we have got, we got 28 <laughs> more days. Praying. Yeah, or more. Yeah, maybe more. That's what we were just talking about. It's like, man, this thing, you know, 
we got to find stuff to do. I was just talking talking to Celeste. I was like, what are we going to do tomorrow? We got to find something to, to kill time. You know, we can't just wake up tomorrow and just be like, you know, like a normal Saturday because we've been just sitting around not doing anything at all, you know. It's like Groundhog Day. So much it, yeah. It's like Groundhog Day. Every day you wake up, it's like, well, this is the same thing we did yesterday. You know yeah, what? Tonight yeah. we went out. It was Friday nights are usually our date nights that we go out. We have our cheat meal. So we just went to um, Five Guys. They brought it to our car. We drove to the back parking lot somewhere and sat on a curb and had our meal. That was our date. <laughs> but we weren't nice, home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. You just got to improvise and get yeah. creative and look at the positive, I suppose. But that's we just sat we, there and shoved our faces. That's what we try to do anyway. So. Hey, you know what? You know, we'll probably enjoy this. That. Jeff, what's on tonight is Glory Road, man. I think that's the name. I'm gonna watch that tonight. That's that came on in here at eight thirty. Glory Road, you know, you have you ever watched that movie before? I don't think I've watched it. it ESPN, turn to ESPN. It came on. It started at eight thirty, but you know, it's a long movie. But watch, yeah. it's about the team that, that uh out of Kentucky. Forgot the name of the team. They won the they won the national championship. Uh, Oh, uh, all uh, starting five was the first first time I think black players could play, and they they oh. you, you, you've probably seen the previews for that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Rose, I know what so you're talking about. It, yeah, it's, yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna watch that and eat, eat some pizza. Hi, My cheat day is every day too. By the way, ah. I cheat. I cheat. I cheat every day. Well, you're working out twice what? a day. What? Yeah, the truth. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that that gives me a better reason. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's easy to eat that slice of pizza when I worked out twice. Yeah. Much easier. That's well, man, funny. go go well, eat we'll your let pizza. You go, um, before you go, real quick, because they've been listening and enjoying it, just say hi to our little TikTokers. There you What's go. Up? What's up, TikTokers? <laughs> hey, I'm. <laughs> hey, I'm you need to get you. At- Go ahead. Uh, yo, you guys going I'm getting one soon. You're gonna see. I'm gonna do the the, the new one is out where the, they're in the crowd or something. Everyone's dancing. I like that one. Yes. Have you guys seen, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. That's the name. Yeah. Keep sweat. I'm gonna do a Keep Sweat song today. Yeah. There we go. Stay tuned. <laughs> do that. And then we'll do something. We can we can duet each other. We can do a duet or something. That would be fun. It's fun. All it right. passes the time and your kids will get into it with you. The kids love yeah. it and they'll think it's great. So but thank you cool. so much for um, being on with us. Thank you. And we'll be in touch with you soon, and we'll let you know when this goes up, okay? Okay, sounds good. Appreciate it. All Andrew, right, Jeff. have Appreciate a good night. Y'all. All right, my man. All Appreciate right. you. Thanks All for right. the time. Bye. All right, no problem. Bye-bye. Bye, brother.